Hello everyone, how are we doing tonight? Hello Weeb, welcome, welcome. How are you doing tonight? Alright, we're in. Okay, so... Chillin'? Nice. So, we've got Act 3 of this quest, which I assume is going to be the finale. And then we're gonna do this. And then hopefully... Uh, I feel like these two are probably gonna take up the entirety of the stream. So then hopefully tomorrow we can finally do the Narciss and Cruise quest. But for now, we're doing this. To the steamboat. Oh, wait. Also, Charlotte, please. Charlotte, please. No! Why doesn't Charlotte love me? I have a standard wish, too. Standard also has nothing for me. Unfortunate. All right. <laughs> what do we do now, Euphrasy? The letter says that this is the second threat now. What do you mean second? Where was the first one? Euphrasy, we're here. Just the people I wanted to see. Did you find anything useful? We discovered that Sir Arthur was stolen by a woman who calls herself Crow or Blackbird. She seems to have a grudge against you. Maybe the Charlotte was the friends we made along the way. Charlotte, please. Uh, she left a threatening letter at the scene. Someone took it, but we retrieved it. What? There really was an initial threat? May I take a look? Uh, yep, that's the threat letter that we read before. What? This? Could it be? What do you remember, you Euphrasy? Please take a look at this first. We received a second threat this morning. The sender seemed very agitated. Outrageously, it would seem that your paper hasn't a shred of remorse. Having not yet caught the attention of the authorities, I made good on my promise by dismembering Sir Arthur and burying him in a field. Oh no! Buried with him are your paper's evil deeds from thirty years ago. Furthermore, I have spread the word. Treasure maps or clues to Dr. Mosso's base shall surely make the treasure hunters come flocking, no? Soon your misdeeds shall come to light alongside that bird's remains. Crow or blackbird? Oh no, Sir Arthur! Sir Arthur shouldn't have to suffer. We never received the first letter. It's all Bollard's fault. I just received news that they're organizing treasure hunting groups. They're probably after Dr. Mosso's base. But they're only going to find the dismembered Sir Arthur and the 
unspeakable things that the paper did, I guess? Agent Hallowshard, I know that the Marichose Phantom has a file on the case, but believe me, there are things that even you don't know. Do you know who sent the letter? If I were to guess, it would be Melo Lombroso, Dr. Mosso's granddaughter. Free my boy, Sir Arthur, he's done nothing wrong! <laughs> granddaughter? So it's a relative coming back for revenge? Hmm, then it would seem that Crow or Blackbird is a question from her. Question? Everyone, time is of the essence right now. Regardless of the authenticity of what's written in those letters, the reputation of the paper will be tarnished if they are published. Will you please retrieve those things for us? In the meantime, I will contact Mello immediately. In that case, I have a request to you, Frazy. You know the clues you're, you know about the clues to Dr. Mosso's base, yes? You want that? I mean, I do know something, but I can't guarantee that it will help your cause. I can promise that I will tell you everything I know after this is over. It might answer some of your questions. Will that work? Sounds good to me. Any questions? I'm ready to go. Wait, Paimon has a question. There are three locations on the map, but where are we going first? If we don't have time, why don't we split up? Curve and I will go to one location, and the Traveler and Paimon will go to another. Whoever finishes first will go to the last place. Seems like we don't have a choice. And the second letter signed Crow or Blackbird used to threaten the Steambird, but without Ballard, it proved successful this time. Yep. Alright. Um before we go, actually, um where's I want to do something. Cause I I believe we can do it now, yes? We did pick up the uh the thing. Hello Estelle. I would uh like something made if you do not mind. Yes! Give me treasure compass. Gimme, give gimme. Give what do I need for the, uh... Oh, you don't make those here, that's right. Never mind. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Gimme. Man, this treasure compass is pretty. Ooh. Where? Oh my god. <laughs> there was a chest right there the entire this? time. See, this is what I need the treasure compass for. <laughs> of exploration ahead of us. Oh, 
will continue with the quest. Quit following me. Whenever the compass stops pointing out treasure. Sandra. The wind rises. I don't think I've been to this part of it much. <laughs> Too slow. Alright, so it's over here. Oh, there it is. I win. Huh. You even want welcome, this? Welcome, welcome. Wait, can you get out through here? Can you get in and out through here? Is this how we got here in the first place? Very tall ladder. Oh my god. <sighs> okay, well, I'm not gonna bother with this right now. If someone had to break the husbando curse. I see. Well, I I did see that you got Farina, I believe. So, congrats. Squad Fury. At least it was worth it. Oh. I just fall all the way down. Why don't I? I miss down here. Bruh. We're just like around the city in general. Bruh. Squall Fury. Take it and have fun. It's proof that bullying does work. <laughs> Talking to a tent tortoise anyway. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> Who's 
this? Oh, oh, it's cooking. Quit following me. What do you mean down? It, it won't let me dive. What do you mean down? Is it down here somewhere? Oh, I see it. I promise we'll get back to the you quest even want this? soon. There are so many quests in here. <laughs> things? No. Unfortunate. Okay. We can uh, get back to the quest now. Yeah, Karina's really good. Getting her is a good option. Like a good idea. Have fun with this gift. The wind rises. Upon the gale. That's far enough. <laughs> Jerk. Swallow fury. Take it and have fun. Come back. Come, or come on, Boland. You can do it. Kevin, what are you doing here? Uh, are you here to look for Sir Arthur and the treasures? If Kevin knows, that means everyone knows. Well, I'm not here for the treasures. I just want to send Sir Arthur back. Does your mother know? Yeah, she came with me, but we split up. Oh, and I have to thank both of you. After you left the other day, I thought about it for a long time. Then I went to look for my mom, and we talked about a lot of things. So you and your mom made up. Paimon was wondering why you were so polite today. <laughs> Good for you. Let's look for Sir Arthur, quick. I think it must have been hidden somewhere tricky. It doesn't- or it usually doesn't take Baland very long to find something. <laughs> this dog looks familiar. Isn't this Rocher's puppy? It does look a little like that one. Rocher? My mother gave me this dog, and I called it Baland. I mean, that's actually my father's name, and he was- and I was mad at him at the time. I got into a fight with my mom previously, and I wound up venting my anger on the dog and kicking him out. Good thing I found him again today, huh? Wait, so... Are you Baland or Lombroso? The puppy wags its tail excitedly, as if saying, I don't understand. Ah! Whatever the case, we just need to find Sir Arthur as soon as possible. We're at the location marked on the map, but where could that bird be? 
If only whoever hit it had left something behind. Bowland has an amazing nose, and he can and can find things quickly after sniffing. Right, look into your bag to see if there's anything we can use. Um What might that be? The puppy looks at you as if waiting for something. So if we're looking for Sir Arthur. Hmm. Um, this one, I guess? I mean, it's got an exclamation mark on it, so... no. This one, I guess? Woof woof. Wow, you got it! Bowland must have found something. The puppy wags its tail excitedly, as if saying, it's in there. Is it in the hole? But the entrance is too small. How do we get in? Nah, we could fit in there. Probably. If I used a small character. Uh, you can do it, Paimon. I can do it. Let me do it. I don't want her pretty clothes to get dirty. Aw, what a gentleman. Paimon can't let you do that. What if there's something scary inside? I'm a problem kid, so I'm not scared of anything. Just wait, I'll be right out. Kevin swiftly climbs into the hole and drags out a chest rather quickly. Aw, I wanted to go in there. I found it. It really is inside. You've changed a lot, Kevin. You're helping other people with their problems. Thank you. <laughs> Let's see what's inside the chest. Sir Arthur's wing! Oh no, Sir Arthur's been dismembered. Oh, I guess I can't get in there. Don't worry, we'll put you back together. I think this is it. Let's go to the next location. We have to get there before the others. I bet Musashi has already found a way in there. Oh ho ho. Ho 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 ho. What do we have over here? You need the loot. Search for Gameplay tutorial. What do we got? Operable mechanism lifting column. Can be raised and lowered. When the base has one receiver node. After the column is raised, it will slowly fall again over time, but with two, raising and lowering can be controlled separately. Uh, I see, I see. Okay, so... Huh, wild that two more spawned in there while I'm still carrying these two. Get 
those out of the way. Um, what do I do with these? Oh, they go in there. Unnecessary. Someone got here before us and they're fighting over the treasure. What are those guys doing here? Let's start with getting them to stop. Wind rises. Stop, I surrender. <laughs> well, what a coincidence. Are you here for the treasure too? Why are you all here? Don't you believe me? Valberry, we're here to look for Sir Arthur. Are you here for the treasure? Ha! I knew this dirty dog would come for the treasure if he heard about the news, and I got him. Um, agents. May I have the chest? I'm looking for Sir Arthur, and if I can return it to the newspaper, I might just be able to get a job. And then I can make some money and buy my wife's things back. Bah! How pathetic! Roche, you really think that's why your wife left you, huh? She left because you're such a pushover. Stand up for yourself like you did just now, and she might look at you differently. R really Of course. Now, be brave and let them have the treasure, or your wife won't be with you even in your next life. Don't- don't say that. Take it easy. They're nice people. If you help them, they'll pay you back. In that case, thank you. And please, take these. Okay. It's- it's Sir Arthur's body! Ah, so, so cruel. And is there anything else? Then it should be in the final place. Balond, come on, we're heading to the next place. Woof, woof. Huh? Lombroso, where did you run off to? I thought you didn't need me anymore. The puppy wags its tail excitedly, as if saying, how's that possible? Lombroso? Uh, Mr. Rocher, are you mistaken? His name is Bauland. What? If it wasn't for Lombroso's companionship, I wouldn't have made it this far. How could I be mistaken? Not like I can be mistaken either. What's going on here? Hey, can't he belong to you both? Seeing as even I've had more than one home. Oh, that makes sense. Kevin accidentally drove the puppy away before, right? Maybe that's when he met Roche and they began roaming around together. I is that really what happened? The puppy wags its tail excitedly, as if saying, that's right. Valberry, you've got some nerve. The dog wouldn't forget its two owners, and as for you, you betrayed your boss twice. You scheming dog. I'm going to hand you over to the Marchose Phantom. I'm taking you down with me. Ah, farewell, friends. Come visit me in the, in the Fortress of Meripede someday. Who the heck wants to go visit you there? Well, never mind. Forget about them. We need to hurry up and get to the last place. Oh, Kevin and Roche, are you going to fight for the puppy? No way. I was the one who really messed up. Bauland can stay wherever he wants from now on. I'm... I'm fine with that too. Lombroso supported me when I was at my worst. I'll support him too. Alright, let's get going then. Yes, we don't want anyone to beat us to it. Do 
to the next location. Oh, where does this go? Huh? What? What the heck? this water going to kill me? No. But I can't dive in it. Okay, so I need to solve whatever this is. Oh! Okay, then. Now I can dive. Interesting. Onward! <laughs> Too slow. Unnecessary. Ooh, what do we got over here? Quit following me. Quit following me. Certainly seems that way. There's, there it is. Oh, this uh, would take me up here. I'm getting very distracted. But I mean, what else is new? to go in there until a quest actually takes us in there. Which I assume would be Narcissan Cruise. Oh, 
there's a person here with the patooey. Oh! Oh, you're the... Yeah. Uh, I'll say it again. Get out of my way. I'm going to see Balon. We're all co-workers here. There's no need to get rough. Oh, I'd like to see how good you are now that you've become a mother, Madeline. Don't underestimate mothers. Curve, let's go. Uh-oh, they're fighting with the Tui. We gotta go home. I think I might have an idea what's going on here. Clear mode switched off. Ah, you came! And you brought Roche and Kevin. It looks like you're doing well, but we've encountered a hiccup. Madame Madeline and Kevin's father are both members of the Fatui. I'm sorry that we hid it from you before. We just want to live a peaceful life. Fatui? Kevin, did you know about this? Yeah, it turns out that Papa wasn't avoiding being at home. He was actually working. I, I was wrong about him. This was to be his father's last assignment. He was ordered to find Dr. Mosso's base. Once he was done, he would be able, be able to retire early. Yeah, I see where this is going. But I had a bad feeling after you came. I wanted him to give up this mission. Wait, find the base. Retire early. Kevin's father is the peripheral personnel Ballard. That's the one. And we only just found out that Ballard is, his, is a code name. He's actually Kevin's father, Mr. Ballard. I saw a letter before, between Mama and another man signed with the name Ballard. I didn't realize it was my father. No wonder it was so lovey-dovey. <laughs> uh, I'm glad it wasn't Roche. Everyone's relationships are complicated enough without a twist like that. Uh, so where is Ballard now? He removed some objects from the chest when the Fatui spot stopped us just before. Detected. A figure running away in the distance. Ah, it's Papa! He's fleeing! Come on, hurry, don't let him get away. Or maybe this quest will, uh, take me into the tower. Stop following me. Probably not. He got stuck. <laughs> don't. Stop chasing me! Why are you always going after me? We want to know why you're always running away. Just stop it, Balond. Madeline, why... I did my homework. You're on a mission for a certain Lord Harbinger, aren't you? And it's a dangerous one, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a Harbinger? Which one? I don't know, but not something we can butt in on. We're just peripheral personnel. Even so, I'm one of the better ones. Someone stole a letter, but left the envelope at the scene. Anyway, I promise I'll be back. This is the last time. Things could get quite hairy with the Harbinger involved. You don't support my actions either, then? You've done enough, Balond. Give the stuff to the agents and come back to us. We can move to a place where no one knows us. Mr. Balond, stop hesitating and make up your mind. Make up my mind? Alright, I... Wait, who are you? Um, I... Stop changing the topic. Balond, you don't have any options left. We're not your buddies, you hear? You... Ugh, fine. I want to be with my family, too. I hope I'm making the right choice. Here's Sir Arthur's head. Great! Father's back and Sir Arthur is complete. Is there anything else? You mean the treasure? Yes, I came for that, but the head was the only thing in the chest. Maybe the treasure's elsewhere. Impossible! We looked for it, and we didn't find any treasures at the other two locations either. No? That's not right. The newspaper. Maybe Mello was just bluffing, and she didn't actually put any treasure in the chests? Wait, Mello? Who's that? Mello Lombroso. Hmm. Wait... Lombroso? Woof, woof. <laughs> Wait, Roche, your dog is called Lombroso too? Well, actually, 
Hello, Lombroso is my wife. Oh, God. I took her last name, too, but she kicked me out, so I was too embarrassed to continue using it. But I miss her a lot, so I named my dog after her. Huh? Maybe it's not my place to butt in, but as a woman, I'm pretty sure she would not find this flattering. <laughs> but Kevin used your husband's name? I was a problem child. What's wrong with a problem child using a problematic name? <laughs> oh, I see. So you're problematic too, Mr. Problem. Just to double check. Is your wife, Melo Lombroso, Dr. Mosso's granddaughter? That's right. I mentioned my wife came from a rich family, right? That's the Mosso family. What's wrong? All right, now the relationships here are a mess. <laughs> Now, I hope you're prepared to hear this. Your wife might be the culprit behind this case. Im impossible. She is pure, elegant, and educated. I swear, it's not possible. But all of our current leads point to her. I don't believe it. I'm certain you're wrong. She could never, ever be the culprit. I think Euphrasy already contacted your wife. We're going back to the paper now. Do you want to come with us? No. There's absolutely no need, because she's not a criminal. Alright, looks like you've got another problem. I think you'll find answers one day, though, and then you can be Mr. Answers. Mr. Answers? Anyway, Kevin, we need to go back and get ready to move. Okay, Dad. Farewell, everyone. I'll miss you. Still, like, still thinking about your wife? Hardly. There's no chance that she's the culprit after all. Not at all. You hear? Then what are you contemplating? I'm thinking about... Life. Right. Also, about that Mr. Answers that Kevin just mentioned. What does that mean? I don't know. How about you, Lombroso? The puppy doesn't speak. Instead, it sits next to the man like an old friend and gazes into the distance, as if looking at their future. Alright, I guess you don't know. The puppy still doesn't speak. Instead, it sits next to the man like an old friend and gazes into the distance, as if looking at their future. Do you really not know? Finally, the dog tilts his head and looks at the man next to him, as if saying, Look, I'm just a dog. <laughs> hmm. Alright, back to the steambird. Bro. What? Behold. How many chests could I have possibly missed in this one little section of... Or, just like, in the, the Court of Fontaine. How many chests could I have possibly missed in the city? Apparently, a lot. Unnecessary. Sorry, we were overthinking things. Euphrasy, we brought Sir Arthur back, and in one piece, too. Thanks a million. I'll make sure Sir Arthur is taken care of. 
Also, there's something else. See, what did Paimon say? She won't be so worried th about Sir Arthur that it would affect her appetite. Oh, so we only found Sir Arthur. Not that anyone got to the treasure ahead of us, either. How can this be? I suspect- so I suspect that Madame Mello might have been bluffing and trying to intimidate you so that you'd reveal- <clears throat> Oh, anyway, let you- er, let me introduce this lady. This is Dr. Mosso's granddaughter, Madame Mello Lombroso. She only returned last night from her hometown to the court of Fontaine, so she can't be the culprit. Good day. In any case, these agents and I are acquainted. I met them when I arrived at the court of Fontaine last night. What? Upon hearing about my husband's recent hardships and how he was loitering around the paper's office, I was worried he'd stir up trouble. So I thought I'd come over and that's when I happened upon them discussing something. Yes, I asked someone to verify her itinerary. Her itinerary. There's no issues there. So if it isn't her, who the heck is the culprit? Apologies for the disruption. Today, upon hearing the news, I came here to clarify that my family never lodged any complaints with the paper about what happened 30 years ago. It was my grandfather's belief that the paper did a good job as well. Thanks for yours and your family's trust. Since everything has been cleared up, I shan't stay any longer. I hope the steambird gets to the bottom of this quickly, regardless. Wait, madame. There's something else I must ask you. Do you know the address of Dr. Mosso's research base? Wait, so you've got the address, Madame Mello? Is it you who's in trouble, miss? I would like to help, but I don't know where my grandfather's research base is. Madam, surely the good doctor must have mentioned it. I don't understand. If my grandfather had told me something, how could I not know? It's possible you weren't aware of some things. Allow me to explain what happened with the doctor. Now, I intend to be totally transparent with you all. Some believe that 30 years ago, it was the paper's special reporting that stirred up public opinion which led to his demise. But the truth is, those articles were not initiated by the paper, but by Dr. Mosso himself. Grandfather himself? He never mentioned this. The Marichose Phantom Files didn't include this either. Because the deal was off the books. The editor-in-chief back then, my mentor, thought that Dr. Mosso's lie detector had the potential become a, to become a hot story. Being the first to stir things up would help the paper gain the most influence and recognition. But, but for my grandfather, how would it benefit him? Your grandfather's research had hit a bottleneck. He had no more data to feed the lie detector to study, but he needed to go further, so... He planned to get the data from public opinion. Right. In a way, the realm of public opinion is like a massive hub for, spe for spreading lies. Countless people are churn churning out true, false, accurate, and inaccurate data every day. Dr. Mosso thought this lesson of dy on dynamic evolution could surely guide his machine to another level of comprehension, and in separating truth from fiction. It would eventually surpass a machine's rules. So, he did it for Curve. However, the doctor and my mentor both underestimated the destructiveness of, pub of public opinion. They lost control. As for what happened next, you know the story. But the key evidence that led to Dr. Mosso's conviction was actually exposed by the paper, right? That evidence was actually provided by your grandfather. He- he provided evidence that criminalized himself? How could that be possible? I'm sorry. My mentor didn't tell me why Dr. Mosso would do this, but it's the truth. Sorry, Editor-in-Chief Euphrasy. I might need to seek confirmation from Curve regarding your words. Biological indicators detected to be normal. Editor-in-Chief Euphrasy is telling the truth. Relevant information retrieved. The Mosso protocols within my core have been modified hundreds of times. The log indicates that these modifications were made by Dr. Mosso. The Mosso protocols were, were changed a hundred times? So that means the doctor really manipulated the test results. 
So why would he give evidence of this to the paper? He planned to confess? But then he requested a duel, didn't he? Paimon can't make heads or tails of this. It makes no sense. He really lied to the public? Why? The data on this question is unresolved. My lie learning module cannot provide an answer. Oh great, now curves become a problem robot. <laughs> Dr. Mosso's research base holds the answer. I can feel it. We must find it. Euphrasy, you just said that Madame Mello had the clues to the base, yes? On the eve of the duel, Mr. Er, Dr. Mosso mentioned in a message to my mentor that he would leave the base's location with his beloved granddaughter. He left it to me? Yes, please try to recall. Did the doctor mention anything to you before he left? I was so young then. Father wouldn't let me go to the duelist's ring to see my grandfather. But the last time I saw him was the day he was detained. It was very early. So, did he give you anything? All I remember is that once the duel was finished, my father brought a piece of jewelry that had been cleaned. He said that my grandfather left it for me. Perhaps the jewel could be connected to the base? Or the jewelry? Uh, I'm sorry to ask, but could we have a look at it? I wouldn't have minded, but my good-for-nothing husband sold it off- sold it to pay off a debt. What? So if Shay gave it to- Ah, uh, don't worry. Is this it? How- how did you end up with this? This is a photo of me when I was little. My grandfather took it. Really? What a coincidence. Are there only photos of Madame Mello in there? According to my mentor, Dr. Molso did leave some clues for you, Madame Mello. Let's take a look. Look, there's a line of text under the photo. Faded under the sunlight, shining under the sunlight. Faded under the sunlight, but shining under the sunlight. What is it? Does something like that really exist? Relevant information retrieved. The different ways in which lives can exist. Different ways in which lives can exist? My grandfather used to say that. How did you... Who are you? May I have the photo? Curve picks up the photo and raises it toward the sky. The sunlight shines through the photo and falls into Curve's eyes, as though passing through 30 years in time. Gradually, another image emerges. A map! The map leading to the research base! So that's how he did it. I had no idea that we had already found the base. Madame Mello, may we... There's no need to ask. Go. And I just noticed this special friend of yours. Good to see you again, Curve. Aww. Greetings, miss. Thank you, Madame Mello. Here's your locket. Let's go now. But we haven't found the person who sent the threats. Don't worry, Paimon. I think you're right in that the criminal doesn't have any evidence and it's just a bluff. So go. Find what you're looking for. Let's go! Arena is indeed very fun. The boss keeps kicking your ass, though. Rip. Hmm. 
you. Come here. Come here. Thank you. Oh, there was another one right there. Went way too far. Bro. Bro. That's way too far. I cannot get this in there right. Am I supposed to start from here and hit it somewhere else? No. Oh, wait. Get in through here. Ah, the heck is that? Liam's ballad, huh? Okay, now I see what I need to do here. I don't have to kill the seals to get this. I think I have to kill the seals to get this chest. they do that that's so cruel is completely submerged. No wonder no one knew where it was. Kurt, are you alright? Moisture has seeped into the motherboard. Core functionality 12%. We have to hurry. A 
Athos's confession. again very rude to make me kill the sea creatures to unlock a chest this is probably the entrance right hold on I think someone was here there are traces nearby Oh, it's impossible. We just got the map after all. True, let's check it out. We're finally inside. Your home is huge, Curve. Home? Hurry up. We need to find the materials ASAP. I hope you left behind instructions on how to fi fix Curve, Dr. Mosso. Hmm. I see a cannon up there. did nothing. Okay. Letter to the editor-in-chief. Draft. Oh, hold on. Let me drink some water before I read this. Editor-in-Chief, you are correct in your judgment that the matter has reached the point of no return. These last few days, I've heard marchers calling for Curve to be destroyed. Last night, radical students broke into my lab and tried to do just that. Luckily, I discovered them in time. However, Curve is in increasing danger. I, I am compelled to act, and my plan is the following. 1. I will revise the MOSO protocols and related data of no practical significance in Curve's core so that what remains is a, con is a sufficiently misleading trail. It will appear lie detectors are not capable of detecting lies and that all the test results were covertly manipulated by myself. As for the ironclad evidence of fraud and deception of the public, I'll leave that in your capable hands. Uh, kindly select a date for the exposure. Two, as soon as I am convicted, I shall propose a duel. And when I fall in the duelist's ring, all will be put to rest. Three, I humbly request that you mo mobilize your paper to divert attention away from Curve. It should be thought of as a useless sham of a machine to be used as evidence in the case and then sealed away by the Marichose Phantom. There's no need to try and change my mind. I've thought through every last detail, and this storm is unlikely to pass until I, the main offender, am dead. Curve is my life's work, so I can't afford any more missteps. I ask that you exchange my life for his. Everything we've done so far has been effective, and Curve's lie learning module has derived redundant data that is incomprehensible. I believe that the seed of life has sprouted within him. Yours sincerely, Mosso Lombroso. Is this the secret letter meant between Dr. Mosso and Euphrasia's predecessor? He seems to have mentioned something important. Dr. Mosso didn't forge anything other than the forged evidence, which he forged and gave to the paper so he'd take all the heat. 
He wanted everyone to focus on him and let it end there. He was trying to protect Curve. That seems to be the answer. Updating lie learning module. Running lie learning module. Warning, motherboard temperature increasing. Warning. Warning, core functionality down to 8%. Warning. Curve, what's going on? They sure to get here fast. Guess they're cruising for a bruising. Ah, you two again! Yeah, where did the Fatui come from? Did someone really get here before us? Quit following me. The wind rises. How amusing. You'd be tough. Good thing I've got what also left behind. Prepare to test subjects. Uh, hey. Excuse me, would you please let me switch? now taken over the cannon's control systems. Curve, are you okay? That's great. Quick, fire at the Fatui. <laughs> nope, down. What are you shooting at, idiot? Okay, over here. <laughs> Curses, you're not easy to deal with. No wonder the Fatui are so reluctant to face you. Editor Jenk, what are you doing here? Why are you here? How do you know about this place? Heh, <laughs> you were discussing the base's location so freely right in front of the paper's doors. It would have been rude of me not to take advantage of such generosity. Jank, you eavesdropped. I was right all along. You're the culprit. Ha <laughs> ha, the culprit. Agent Talishard, are you going to start cawing like a crow again? I see. It's useless to try and deny it. You're right. Indeed, I am the culprit, but I only wanted to help this moronic excuse for an agent to sort out the case. It's not like she can just write, that guy called me a crow, so he must be the culprit or something like that in the case file, now can she? You. Shh. Hush now. How about using your brain instead of your temper for once? Surely you must still have a number of questions regarding this case. Such as my motives, aren't you the least bit curious? You just wanted all of Curve's research materials, didn't you? And the paper's alleged dirt on Mosso faking results from back then? Oh, looks like that question was far too easy. As for the second question, I'm merely a low-level editor. How could, a, how could little old me possibly be privy to such secrets at the paper? How should I know? Give us more lore. Ugh, you must have learned about it from Baulard. Bingo! It was Baulard who came knocking. That's when I realized the paper had made a serious error 30 years ago, causing the downfall of a genius scientist. More importantly, isn't it truly a lamentable loss that the scientist's legacy should has been buried for so long? Shouldn't the paper apologize to the general public for this? What? What do you mean? Is exposing what happened really all you're after? Exposing? Ha! 
<laughs> There's a much more suitable word. Judgment. People will pass judgment on the newspaper like they did Dr. Mosso. The paper must take responsibility for this. How... How can you sit, make yourself sound so righteous like that with a straight face? But is it not the simple truth? I'm the hero who recently exposed the Conferi's fraud. The righteous and valiant Jenk. That's how everyone should see me, no? No, you sanctimonious scoundrel! You just want to profit from all of this. If the public starts to denounce the paper, Editor-in-Chief Euphrasy will be in trouble. You... You just want the top spot. Excellent. Perfect. I must admit, what you imagine isn't completely wrong, so allow me to fill in a few gaps for you. I've already made a deal with Bollard's supervisor. I find Dr. Mosso's inheritance for them, and they help me take over the Steambird. Plus, Bollard's supervisor serves a real VIP. A harbinger. Mm -hmm. Which one? Which harbinger? None of your business. No, tell me. With the Harbinger's backing, Euphrasy won't stand a chance, and the Steambird will be mine. Jank, you're just a squawking blackbird with a silver tongue. We won't let you get away with this. But you'll have to stay alive to do that. I'm so sorry. Can you not hear anything yet? Click, click, click. An ominous sound is echoing through the base. What is that? Ha! Huh, the self-destruction system! How perfect. It just takes a little time to get going. A big thank you to Dr. Mosso for writing the instructions. And thank you everyone for giving me the time. Uh-oh. Farewell, little crow, Agent Curve, and you two visitors from afar. Use these last moments to embrace each other. Then rest in peace as you are buried along with the truth. Jank practically flies out of the entrance. The door closes behind him with a heavy thud. Oh no! So he was the one who took the materials after all. Are we going to get blown to smithereens? Calculating survivor, survival probability of the traveler. Data insufficient. Calculation failed. Calculating survival probability of Miss Paimon. Data insufficient. Calculation failed. Uh, survival probability of Agent Talishard. Calculation successful. Result, 1%. Survival probability of own core module, 1%. How can this be? No, no, no. We've got to do something. Can we dig our way out? The self-destruct cables run through the walls. Breaking through could lead to an early, an early detonation, as could attempting to force the door. I'll do my best to protect you, all of you. Is this all because of me again? Agent Talofshard, don't blame yourself. There's no need to worry, everyone. Because I am able to shut down the base's self-destruct system. Huh? Curve? Why didn't you say so earlier? Paimon was getting all worried for nothing. You didn't ask earlier? <laughs> Well, seems like y you even have a sense of humor. Now tell us what to do. Please, kindly, withdraw my core module and place it in the base's control panel. Then I will be able to open the safe room lock. There is a button that disables the self-destruct system inside the safe room. You mean, you open the door for us, we go to the safe room and press the button inside, and everything will be taken care of? That is correct. And you? Curve. Can your core be removed from the control panel afterward? I must stay connected. The control panel... Otherwise, the safe room will relock. Seems like we should take care of the self-destruct system first. Urgent. Please act fast. Uh, take Curve's core and place it in the control panel. All we need to do is deactivate the self-destruct system. Curve, will this really work? I think you might be a bit... Please take action. Repeat. Repeat. Please t take take action. Repeat. R repeat. P please, please, please take... Oh, he's breaking down.
the door to the safe room opens with a light shutter. We should be fine putting it in like this, something something, dot dot dot. Olive Shard, don't stand around, let's go. Is this it? It doesn't seem like a safe room. And where's the button? Curve! What is this place? We can't see any buttons. Huh? Eh? Eh? Why did the door just close? Curve? What's going on? How do we stop the base from self-destructing? The self-destruct system cannot be deactivated. What? So are we... Apologies. Please escape as quickly as possible. Oh, jeez. Just now. No, I need to go back and find Curve. Oh god, what's gonna happen if I close and reopen the game? How far back is it gonna put me? Oh, I hope it doesn't put put me back too far, but I could not I could not deal with that. Yep, there we go. Alright. Just now. No, I need to go back and find Curve. Uh, um, Tallow Shard, don't be too reckless. Going back is extremely dangerous. Yeah, there was just an explosion, and it's so deep underwater. Curve wouldn't want you running right back into danger. You're... <sighs> you are correct. I shouldn't act like this. But... Didn't he say the self-destruct mechanism could be shut off? He lied. He can't shut it down. His core can only open the emergency exit. So then why? His core had to be inside the control panel to open the emergency exit. But he's smart now. He knew we wouldn't leave him behind. So he lied to us. Oh wow. He can already think like that? Wouldn't that... When did he... It must have been Dr. Mosso's letter that made Curve understand the final question. He learned about what Dr. Mosso did for him. Turns out I'm useless after all. If only I were more competent, maybe I could have helped him break the protocols and we wouldn't have had to come here. But the letter might just have been the final push. That's right. Don't blame yourself. Curb's breakthrough probably started a long time ago. 
his breakthrough had already started. Let's say you eat 100 slimes in one sitting and get super fat. You can't blame it all on the last slime. It's the same with Curve. Even if the doctor's letter was crucial, all the work you did with Curve wasn't wasted at all. Is that really true? Well, I don't know. Curve, the question you're leaving behind, I may never understand it. Anyway, thank you. And I know what we should do next. Catch that awful scoundrel Jank. Absolutely, definitely, he must be tried for his crimes. And just like that, you and Talishard return to the court of Fontaine and start hunting for this, for the dastardly Jank. Surprisingly, des despite several days of intensive investigation, you turn up no leads. It seemed like Jank had vanished. No one had seen him, nor had any negative news regarding the Steambird surfaced. Until one day, Editor-in-Chief Euphrasy sends you a message requesting to meet in the city. Ah, you're finally here. It turns out that we don't know our own people well enough. This allowed an employee to create some serious trouble. I offer my sincerest apologies. Especially to you, Agent Talishard. It's not your fault, Euphrasy. Right now, the important thing is that we stop that odious scoundrel. By the way, you were so anxious to meet us. Is it because he contacted you? Actually, I received a message. Earlier this morning, Jank was left in the Opera Epiclase, all trussed up. So I contacted you immediately. He's been caught? By who? We're still not sure. By the time he was found, he seemed to have lost his mind. He didn't react to any external stimuli at all. He was just kneeling on the stage of the Opera Epiclase. He looked like a doll that had just stood trial. The Maison Guardianage folks took him in. When they examined him, they found that his tongue was missing. Oh my god. His tongue? Oh my, that's terrifying. The Maison Guardianage also discovered a note in his mouth. It said something to the effect of making amends to you. Making amends to us? You, Paimon, Talishard, your names were written on the paper. Seems like the person who was backing him wants to apologize to you three. It appears they don't want to make enemies out of you. Or maybe they feel quite strongly about what happened to Agent Curve. Those are the only possibilities I can think of. The person behind him... Paimon remembers Jank said that he had a deal with a Fatui Harbinger, but which one? A harbinger interested in machine intelligence. How about Dr. Mosso's legacy? Jank took all of Curve's design and research data. Gone without a trace. That wretched Jank. That's what happens when you decide to go full evil. I guess this counts as him being tried for his crimes, right? Though we don't know who the judge is. So that's what happened. Though I didn't catch him personally. I at least feel like he finally paid the price for his crimes. <sighs> Since all of your names are on the paper, the Maison Guardianage will probably want to pay you a visit. I'll go over right now and explain everything so they won't bother you. Finally, I hope the case can end here. Wait, Agent Talishard, would you mind going back to the newspaper with me? Why, you Euphrasy? If you want to convince me to write your fantasy column, it's not happening. Still in the mood to joke, I see. That makes me feel much better. Let's go. See, the only thought going through my head right now is there are two harbingers who are strongly associated with machines. Which one is it? <laughs> uh, but I wasn't joking at all, you know. 
I will work very hard and do my best in the Mario Chose Phantom. Harbinger who likes mechanical stuff, Sandrone. Yeah, it, it's either Dottore or Sandrone. I don't think Dottore would apologize to us. <laughs> so, Sandrone does make more sense. Uh, but I wasn't joking at all, you know? I will work very hard and do my best in the Marichose Phantom. That's wonderful, Talishard. Paimon is happy for you. Please have a look. We fixed Sir Arthur. Wow, it's Sir Arthur! We almost forgot about it! Good job! Sir Arthur sure has been through a lot. By the way, Paimon still doesn't know what kind of bird Sir Arthur is. A pelican. A pelican? You mean the kind of bird that's an amazing eater? But why would the steam bird's mascot be a pelican? That doesn't seem like it has anything to do with the newspaper at all. The leading theory is that she did all of that to him because because of what happened with Sir Arthur, and she just doesn't want problems with us. She definitely has ties to Fontaine. Yeah, yeah. I saw a uh, video pop up on my home screen. I didn't watch it, obviously, because, uh, uh... Yeah, I think I've been spoiled on the uh, Narzis and Cruz thing. I don't know if it was a direct spoiler or a theory. I'm not going to say what it was that I saw, but I did see something on my YouTube home screen connecting Sandrone to the uh, Narzis and Cruz stuff. Hello, Gretcha! Welcome, welcome. Uh, but why would the Steambird's mascot be a pelican? That doesn't seem like it has anything to do with the newspaper at all. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm not clear on that either. It was a decision my mentor made after the incident with Dr. Mulso. Maybe he felt it's cuter than, say, a crow or a blackbird that squawks all day long. Hey, you Frazy, you know you kind of resemble a pelican hiding food in its pouch right now. <laughs> anyway, Agent Talishard, do you remember how Agent Curve and I interviewed nearby residents at the start of the case? Of course, you took the opportunity to blow our cover. Truly sorry about that, but that was when I asked him, what kind of person is Agent Talishard? What? Ah, uh, Paimon remembers. Euphrasy came back and commissioned us right away. Were you awed by Talishard's brilliant track record? Why don't we check with Sir Arthur on that? During the repairs, I added what Agent Curve said to Sir Arthur's voice library as a memento. Oh? Quickly, tell us what Curve said, Sir Arthur. Based on my analysis, Agent Talishard will be the best agent in the Marichose Phantom. R really? I'll be the best? But would Curve really have said something like that back then? Maybe back then he already learned to... Yeah, that's gotta be it, Talishard. Since you're Curve's handler, you must be the one who fed him the first 99 slimes. That seems to be the answer. Well then, Curve, I will be the best agent in the Marichose Phantom. Played through the Narzis and Cruz quest, but you're too stupid to understand. You'll need to find someone who explains it. I will always recommend Ashikai. Ashikai is very good at explaining lore in a way that makes sense. And also theories. I love Ashikai's theories. Alright, that was sweet. That was a lot longer than I thought it was going to be, but it was sweet. But, uh, the Narziss and Cruz questline is, like, very scattered. So I don't blame you for, uh, struggling to make sense of it. Like, bits of it are all over the place. Oh, I just need a little bit more to do another pull. Alright. I believe
believe we should be uh, hopefully wrapping up this one, this quest as well. And then next time we can get into the Narziss and Crew's quest line. Is that Haley Troll just sleeping? Yeah, it's just sleeping. Alright. Further, the energy flow continues forward. Uh, that's three. I mean, move the boat. There are a few dive suits by Edwin's house. Oh, no, no, no! Don't, don't miss it. It was sweet, not like a dude got tortured and had his tongue removed. You know what? <laughs> I mean, bro deserved it. <laughs> Another reason for the Cendrone idea is it said he looked like a puppet. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Take it and have fun. It's confusing because it's non-linear and when you play something like Mimir Quest for the first, you don't know it, that it's relevant and you probably don't even make the connection. Yeah. Yeah, that's basically what I was saying. Like, it's it's all over the place. So it can be uh, a bit tricky to make sense of it. It's set up that way. No! Crap. But yeah, uh, I think it's really neat that it's set up that way, but it does make it a little bit tricky to understand. I'm supposed to be going. It's neat, but you think you like the desert quests a bit more? I mean, it's hard to compare anything to the desert quests because they have Jet and she is the best NPC. regrets. What's this? The door's locked. What a pain. We've come all this way. Now we need to start solving riddles. Edwin just happened to be in the right place at the right time. He's acting strangely. He feels like he's pushing us to give Knacker trouble. Uh, huh. Jet hard carries Genshin. Real. did nothing. Oh no wait, no it didn't. That did something. I'm not sure what, but it did something.
Poyo realize the amount of money they can make from a jet banner. Real <gasps> playable jet win. I stand by my belief that she should have gotten a Hydro Vision at the end of her quest. Like, come on, that was the perfect moment for her to get a vision. Uh, whatever was engraved on the nameplate has been worn away and is now unclear. Wow, super helpful, thanks. Uh, track assemblage. Uh... Okay, so I do need to find one of these little octopus fellas. What are these for? There's so many of them. charged on a downed ruin guard? Heck yeah. Uh. <sighs> okay, what kind of material is this anyways? Oh, okay, it's a local specialty. I see. For some reason I thought it was like a, a quest item of some kind. Octopus fella that I can Where's a fella that I can get the ability from? Aha this underwater. Oh, that didn't do anything. How do I do this? How do I? Oh my god, why did those hit so hard? Jellyfish thingy? Ah, uh, there was one of them up 
like way up here somewhere. isn't even what we're like actually supposed to be doing for the quest. Don't ask why I have so much food. Um, that, uh, does not seem to be doing a lot of damage. Do I get it when it's like this? It's doing so little damage, what the heck? There's gotta be a trick to this that I'm missing. Right? Why do you do so much damage? Oh my god. That's illegal. damage oh god we're gonna be here for a million years What the heck, 
man. I don't know what I was doing wrong there. Let's, uh, try to focus on the quest instead. What the heck was that, man? That was just downright unfair. this for something over here then. Do I just need to send it from one end to the other? What am I supposed to be doing here? Alright, so I need to stop it somewhere. Where do I need to stop it? So confused. Hold on. Ah, I sort of see. Excuse me, why did this run out? Give me that. Am I missing something? Like, missing a piece of this? So we need to make sure it stops. Like, in the center? On the top?
Do I need to put more pieces on it somehow or something? Mm. Do I need to make it stop on the thing by the plate? Farina, you're not hitting the stupid thing fast enough. Finally, oh my god. So that's why he kept on repeating the number five. He was giving us hints about how to solve the riddle. The heck was with that camera angle? Why didn't he just tell us straight? Why beat around the bush? Hmm, who knows what's going on in that head of his, but he seemed to have been trying to lead us to Knacker. The dive suits were just left by the house, almost like they were prepared for us. Is this Knacker's view? Uh, looks like he found us first. No research value, but I... I've spent so much time. Fusilier, she's been murmuring to herself the whole time. But do you get the feeling that we've, that we've been watched? Paimon feels chills running down her spine. I'll take the lead and look inside. Yeah, I'm going to assume that was Knacker watching us. <laughs> A huge empty space with nothing inside. Did we come up empty handed? The plants have been intentionally cleared, and the trimming seems relatively recent. All the trouble I went through for him. Anyway, I'll go down alone and take a look. You stay with Miss Institute, lady. If things get out of hand, take her and go. That is really interesting how they did that. But there's nothing here. How could things get out of hand? Squeak. Beep beep. What? Whoa, look out! Something's coming! Not Knacker, but a machine. Persistent pest. Strike a uh, your... Honorary senior researcher, it's a pleasure to see you. Still running errands for the Institute. Thanks for getting rid of that pest of idiotic reporter from earlier. I owe you a for that, but now I have no further use for you. Oh god. I'm both stay here. Help me test the effectiveness of my field generator. Oh. Ah! Don't look at me. Like... I'm so sorry, Farina. Oh, this is not a good team for this. Look at you. Like, not in the slightest. Right. Stupid thing shield. <laughs> Ah. 
Well, I have a very no well team. I mean, we're making it work. How amusing. the X-Files on the TV downstairs. <laughs> oh my god, there we go. That scoundrel is right up there. Get him! Darn, darn. Get out. One last step. One last step. Oh, you're not going anywhere. Hurry, get that liar. Wretch, fraud, the most... The third most annoying person in the Institute. Who are first and second. Institute dogs, how much did Troisol and Raimondo pay you? Not one, Mora. I volunteered. You, you, listen to me. Let me go. My field generator is almost done. Once I successfully synchronize it with the Archeum Kinetic Core, then, then I'll be the greatest kinetic engineer ever. Taking credit for someone else's work and claiming to be the greatest engineer. Shame on you. Now I finally know why Mr. Ed- Edwin never wanted you to take part in the core research project. Edwin doesn't know a thing about what to do with it. You're also from the Institute. You know about the true value of this thing. Help me. I can develop it with you. Then we'll both be famous and incomparable. Edwin, Raimondo, Toisol, none of them can surpass our fame. Ah, uh, looks like what Raimondo said was true. Edwin, Mr. Edwin's achievements belong to the Institute. I'm only here to claim them. Nothing more, nothing less. Miss Fusilier suddenly changed how she addresses Edwin. Don't be a fool, girl. You don't know what Consini can give us. We'll never get such benefits even if we run errands for Edwin for a million years. Edwin and the Institute only wanted to use us. We have to think for ourselves. I had enough of this nonsense. Shut up. And who the heck are you? The one who watches over Lumidus Harbor. One more word and you'll taste my fist. Help me tie him up and take that core or whatever. It's time we head back. I'm trying to figure out what the fastest way to get to that place would be. Treasure hoarders, buy treasure hoarders. Quit following okay, me. go get that teleport. Swan 
fury. Boggy Forest Branch. Interesting. <laughs> Institute Quest was fun and you think this guy's funny. Except for that time you didn't know about the purple water is not diveable and broke every bone in Lumian's body. Oh no, her bones! Edwin, I knew it. You lured them over. You've always been jealous of me, afraid that my research would surpass yours. You're right. I am so jealous of how totally oblivious and ignorant you are. No wonder you led such a blissful life back at the Institute. Only if Toisol was here to see this, he'd faint. You better never wake up. You go back to the Institute with them and repent. I need to get back to my research. You didn't break anything, did you? Who said you can go back to your research? What are you going to do? Take me back to the Institute? How am I supposed to continue my research, then? That fool, Raimondo, will definitely turn the Institute into a mess. And that idiot, Toisseau. Ugh, the mere thought of it gives me a headache. You're the one who turned the Institute into a mess. Stop shifting the blame to someone else. Me? Fine. You want to blame me for the explosion at the Central Laboratory, right? But you know what? I wasn't even there. The Institute is full of fools. Even someone knocking over a cup of coffee can trigger an equipment malfunction, so I'm not surprised they managed to cause an explosion. Then why didn't you try to explain that to them? Explain? I'm not going to be their scapegoat. I have a lot of research on my hands, and my time cannot be wasted on them. And so you decided to get mixed up with the likes of Consini? Oh, he's no better. He couldn't even get his hands on a piece of precision equipment. I had to do all the work. At least he's willing to fund the research, so everything went smoothly. But I didn't expect our dear Knacker to come here with that incomplete core prototype. I've modified it. With my tech, you can never develop. Ha <laughs> ha! Mr. Knacker, Mr. Consini is not here for you to suck up to, so why don't you stop lying to yourself? Don't you have an ounce of dignity as a researcher? You... It's incomplete only because you don't know how to complete it. But I know how, and I can do it. Right. Now just take this piece of junk back to the Institute and keep leeching off it. I have something more important that requires my attention. You... Fusis something? I'll leave this to you. Will those two ever stop arguing? Enough! What? Can you stop wasting my time? I need to get back to work. I said enough! Edwin Eastinghouse, you... You were the one who blew the Institute up. And you, Knacker, you stole the Institute's assets. And blew the Institute up a second time. <laughs> Both of you harmed the interests of the Institute. As the Special Investigator of the Fontaine Research Institute, I am taking both of you back to the Institute where you shall be dealt with accordingly. Darn. Is that all you have to say, Knacker? <laughs> ah, oh, please. Lamarck and I will escort these two back. Say, we've earned the Aaron, we've been the Aaron boys for a long time, so the Institute will definitely compensate us, right? Remember, keep your mouths shut along the way, or you might meet an early end. Alright, back to the Fontaine Research Institute. Science guys getting pissy and petty about research is the funniest thing ever. Dude, academics 
get so argumentative. It's so funny. <laughs> ah, Miss Fusilier, traveler, you're back. You must have handled things. Oh no. Whoa, Mr. Troisseau is really about to faint. I didn't think you'd be back at the Institute, Troisseau. I figured you'd be stuck dealing with paperwork forever. This, this is impossible. Goodness gracious. Raimondo, how does it feel to be taking over my job? Anything worth reporting? What a wonderful reunion, Mr. Edwin. Ha! Look around you. You really do seem suited for janitorial work. <laughs> he didn't even clean it up properly. Mainly because he didn't clean you up. Someone who looks into science and they get goofy. <laughs> they do. Uh, thank you for bringing those two back, honorary senior researcher, Miss Fusilier. Hopefully this marks the end of the Fontaine Research Institute's series of unfortunate events and turmoil. Ha ha ha! Great! The Fontaine Research Institute will now fall into deathly stillness where all inspirations wither and die. You certainly have already sparked much inspiration around the Institute. It's time to calm things down. Raimondo Havenport, you know nothing about research. You are not fit to lead the Fontaine Research Institute of Kinetic Energy Engineering. But I know how to keep it up and running properly, as Edwin Eastinghouse. What you need to do right now is stay away from research and Archeum. It's better for all of us. Sometime later, the Maison Guardianage's personnel arrive and take both Knacker and Edwin. It is for the best that they finally leave the Institute for good. Thank goodness, my nightmare has finally ended. Mr. Chausevet, Mr. Lamarck, yes? There, I keep misreading that. Chausevet. Uh, I've heard about the assistance you rendered to our institute. Please take a well-deserved rest here while your compensation is being arranged. Ha ha, I didn't think someone like me would ever be associated with the institute. Don't say that about yourself, dear sir. You're sincere and kind-hearted, so you're definitely a good person. Maybe we'll enlist your help in the future. As for you, honorary senior researcher, you did us a great favor once again. How should we ever repay you? Just, just, just don't get blown up again. By the way, where's Miss Fusilier? We should give her some room to calm down. Looks like the image of Edwin Eastinghouse she had created in her head has completely shattered. Edwin and Knacker need to calm down as well. I hope they can reflect on their own mistakes. Will they stay in the Fortress of Meripede all their life? Judging by how dangerous they are, I hope they never leave that place. However, given the state of things here at the Fontaine Research Institute, I can only hope I don't run into situations that would require their expertise. I thank you again on behalf of the Fontaine Research Institute, honorary senior researcher, if you have any further questions, I'm at your service. Alright, let's hear it. Any questions? Uh, what will happen with Knacker and Edwin? They will temporarily stay at the Fortress of Meripede where they will repent for their misconduct. That said, the Edwin I know doesn't do repent. No matter, as long as Edwin is kept away from research equipment and Archeum. As for Knacker, I don't believe he'll cause more trouble for us. I... I can only hope I can... I don't run into situations that would require their expertise. Alright, uh, did Fusilier used to worship Edwin? Edwin Eastinghouse is a genius. People in the same field either gave up on themselves or became his followers. Miss Fusilier is a very passionate and creative researcher, often achieving great results with minimal resources. After joining the Tech Sect 3 of the Archeum Research Project, she was put in charge of the structural design of the suppressor and had frequent run-ins with Edwin. Maybe that's when she started idolizing Edwin. Just like the other followers, Edwin's approval became her only pursuit. After the explosion, she refused to believe that Edwin was the one who caused it, so she applied to join the investigation in an attempt to clear Edwin's name. Now that you've dealt with Edwin, what do you make of him? A freak of nature who only cares for his research. He always tries to push the blame to others, and he can't even remember Miss Fusilier's name. That sounds like him, all right. Other than his research, there's rarely anything that's worth a second of his attention. 
and he cares for nothing else as long as his research runs smoothly. Not even when his own subordinates stole the Institute's assets to sell. I only approved Fusilier's application to join the investigation, so she would come to realize she was chasing an image of him she fabricated. Now that image has finally been shattered, I can only hope she picks herself up soon. The Fontaine Research Institute cannot afford to lose more of its people. Fossil, you got anything for us to say? Uh, how do you feel about Edwin's coming back to life? Whoa, you scared me. How I feel? Nothing, to be honest. I only hope that irresponsible scoundrel pays for what he's done. Personally, I'd tie his hands and legs up and blindfold him to stop him from getting his hands on Archeum if I could. Alright, uh, do you feel relieved now? A bit more relieved, yes, compared to before. But to be honest, locking Knacker and Edwin up together? Gosh, I can't even imagine what those two would be up to. Explosion has been passed and done, so what's next? Flooding the entire Fontaine with Fanta? I can't even imagine. <laughs> even explain why that's so funny to me just <laughs> is this an evangelion reference it it feels like an evangelion reference <laughs> hoyo loves evangelion references so <laughs> Alright, um, so a few things I want to do. First, I want to hit up the Fountain of Lucene because I have not done that in a hot minute. Swan Fury. Actually, Statue of the Seven probably would have been better to go to first, but oh well. What do we got here? Ooh! Standard wishes. Nice, nice. Very, very nice. Statue of the Seven. because I've finished a few quests and also done more exploration. Heck yeah. And while we're here at the Steambird, Charlotte, please. Charlotte, please. No! Alright, what's standard got for us? And those jokes I was making about uh, getting C1 Farina before I get Charlotte are no longer feeling like jokes. So I'm going to wrap it up here for tonight. Tomorrow, we will finally start the last part of the Narzissan Cruise quest. So, thank you all for stopping by, and I hope to see you all next time. <laughs>